from from Gary and 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 the mom. It was a very simple scene, and I think like they hand me a sandwich and some chips, and I say thank you, mom. Like literally three or four words. It was very early on. I think it was in the first week or something. And we did one take, and he said cut, and another, and cut, and he just said he just. I just couldn't do it. And it was like 15 or 20 takes at this point. And I was becoming emotional. I was like, you don't want to disappoint David Lynch like on the first week of the shoot. You know what I mean? And I just couldn't deliver it for whatever reason. Or I couldn't give him what he wanted. I remember him saying, you know what? Let's break for lunch and we'll come back. And that's like, as an actor, that's a nightmare. Like, oh my God, they were going to move on after lunch. No. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing this, and and during lunch, he came in uh, to my trailer or whatever, and and spoke to me, and said something to the effect of, you know, when they hand you that sandwich, I want you to imagine that your father has a hummingbird singing you a lullaby, and that you're a child seeing that hummingbird for the first time, almost like when a kid sees fire. I think that that wonder in in your eye. And that with the sandwich and the chips, I want you to imagine that you'll never grow old or, or become ill. <laughs> Can you imagine the gratitude you'd have for a sandwich like that? <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I ingested that information. And then, uh, you know, and then we came back from lunch, and I think we did one take, and it was, you know, cut print, moving on kind of a scene. But, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's the kind of direction he gives, if anybody's wondering. Yeah, I, I love this film and I've seen it many times, and what, what I'll describe to you so much about it is that the, the uh, holes that are there, and the space, and that are there, and the plot, I mean, so that with the, uh, the sense of, we, we don't know how far back any of the walls go, mm -hmm. and you have the sense that the spaces keep shifting. tonight too a weird use of space that I never noticed before like you get used to you know your normal way of shooting things you know use your masters or close ups or two shots whatever and you get to know the apartment or the space pretty quickly you know it's like second nature to all of our brains now but the minute that you get look through the videotape where you were going over the living room and over the couch that also just fucked with the whole perspective like that's not right. You should never be from that angle, going over your own chairs. What the hell is this whole thing? And I noticed that also tonight, that cut into him in the middle of that solo of being a non-formulaic move. And I do think that's another one of David's strengths and your strength as an editor to not just go about things in the most, you know, formulaic pattern. And I think that really supported the whole, you know, the, the emotional, psychological, that we never talked about, reality of the characters, is that everything was so disorienting and, and how, was emotionally very powerful. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's testament to, to cinema, that you can do these kinds of things that aren't a linear narrative, and, and because it's got music and sound and, and you're seeing things, um, seeing people do things, it's not about the words necessarily. I know that that's kind of a weird thing for the writing profession to say. But um, <laughs> it, you know, it's just it, it's a, it, uh, it's a different it's a different medium to write in, and and um, you know what you had to say. I feel pretty strongly about that too. Although I have to say, watching it tonight, um, this is one thing that seemed different that we just mentioned to each other, which is uh, it seemed more of a horror movie than I remembered. Making. <laughs> 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 I was really 
David Lynch directs you guys because what strikes me about this movie is the way you guys look at each other and interact with each other. It's very much ambiguous what you guys want, what your objectives are, what your it's like in a good way. It like allows us to fill in the blanks. I'm wondering how he gets you guys to that place as actors. He did something really interesting with me. It's, it's the scene towards the end where we meet up in the motel and I think we're planning the, the assault on on the guy and it was in a motel we were shooting in the valley and I remember rehearsing it a lot and you know actors and humans have a tendency of using our hands you know when when we speak and you see actors doing it a lot and it can it can become a real trap for an actor um, to want to do a lot of hand acting you know and um, we do it in instinctively uh, you know our, our hands kind of motion what we're saying but he actually made me sit on my hands for that entire scene I could not come off from my hands and so the whole time I was having to you know I was, I was having to use almost another uh, another layer another level of, of communication um, just using your eyes uh, I think you pick up on you know he makes very strong choices like that and I think you know, the effect of that is what you're speaking of, the ambiguity and, uh, and, and some of the your choices there. Uh, I, I remember when I first saw the movie, I, called, I came away and I thought, boy, that was flat. <laughs> and I think, you know, there's something of that, which is that less is more thing that's really 
challenging, but watching it now, I didn't, I didn't mind myself so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but, I, but I, I think it's because I see the whole thing, you know, some of it is a, a, an objective, you know, it's kind of we move to get to a blank slate so that the, it becomes opaque. And it's nothing intentional. It's not what you're doing, you know, that's going to be important. It's what you are sitting on top of that you're, you know, you're not, you're not becoming a vessel that's like, you can get the stink of your emotions from it. It's like something that's opaque. And then the violence comes out of this not knowing who you are and not, you know, in a way, you know, that whole thing. And uh, uh, I think uh, that I can remember being the one time where David was cool and never lose his, you know, I think he never lost his, but we were in that house where Andy's house, where all the porno stuff was, and uh, we were doing that, you know, every once in a while, we, there would be takes where we'd go, right, that's good, one take, go. And then other times, inexplicably, it would go to 18 or 20 takes. And that's, that was kabuki to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, not, and to me, who had to do the line over again, I can remember it was a line on the stairway. I, I, I missed it. But it, it was, you know, with Mike and Nancy, and he's coming up, and I, you know, it was this one scene. And we had lost, you know, we're shooting in Malibu, and uh, you, you have to shut it down at 11 o'clock. You cannot in Malibu, you know. They have special police forces that come down and <laughs> shut it down. And Deepak Nair, who was the producer, you know, um, uh, David, David, we have to stop now, you know. And just like, and David would always be, we're going again. <laughs> we're going again. Uh, and it was, it, you know, that, that real, that nerve that he had, did they kind of become a little bit of a, an infusion about nerve. I think you, you want that nerve to be, you know, empty or blank. And, but it was, I also think that this, as much as I felt like I was, you know, managing and doing well, it was also the one time I, you know, in my life, I remember this moment where I was in the kitchen and you said something very innocuous and I took the carton of milk and just slammed it down and both of us were like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> And I don't think of myself as bringing a person who brings the work home, but uh, that movie, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's I've been there's no better feeling as an actor than to really following a great leader. You know, I mean, that's what you want, and it it, it all starts with the director. You know, and the, a great feeling for an actor is to really feel confident with your leader. You know, and and I've been lucky to work with you know quite a few great directors, but you know he's you know. Just when you know somebody has such a pure vision, you just all you have to do is trust them. So it's almost like the moment you decided to do it, you just trusted him completely. And uh, you know, I knew that that was a great feeling. You know, it's it's really nice as an actor to feel that that safe.
couple days of rehearsal up, you know, up at the house, just kind of, <laughs> I can remember, oh God, before the first rehearsal, <laughs> I went I went to one of those tanning beds, I thought I would look a little bit pasty, you know, and I was like, oh shit, man. And I remember I like fell asleep in one of them with those little things <laughs> on my eyes, and I woke up a half an hour later, and I remember I had, you know, these white things, I remember showing up at David, and he was like, Hey, Val, uh, how about no more tanning? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, but I just remember him kind of forcing these uncomfortable moments between us, kind of breaking down um, some sort of walls uh, within us. But I don't remember a traditional uh, table read. Uh, this is my first opportunity to uh, see this movie, and uh, it's good for you to Days of shooting, I was in the line producer, I think it was 45, something like that. Does that sound right? Um, and then post, generally, um, you know, we would take roughly six months in post. And I and I am a strong advocate of the fact that you should take six months, whether you're doing it on film or, um, you know, uh, on an Abbott or Final Cut Pro, because you need, you need time to digest and let the story kind of change. Um, but in film, you definitely, absolutely need that amount of time. And um, the price is post not really. I, you know, I had budgeted to do it because by that point we were already cutting. You know, we would do commercials in between features, and I was already cutting the commercials on Avid. So I, I did budget it for both Avid um, and film. And I think it was really my conversations with the lab, and at that time, so this was like the mid-90s, 96, 97, they were still um, so much more comfortable with straight film. And so uh, they ended up really not, it wasn't that cost effective because I wasn't going to shorten my post schedule um, to do that, but so we went with film. And, you know, it, it um, there were no problems. I mean, I, I recently saw Ms. Costin came to my class and showed the opening to Apocalypse Now, which has an incredibly beautiful opening sequence that is all these, you know, superimpositions and, 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 you know, these are all obstacles that they had to make in the lab by pulling the negative and doing that kind of heavy lifting to get that kind of art out of, out of it. And that's what we were, you know, like the last sequence where your head blows up. You know, that was like math. That was like building a or something. You know, and you're, you know, really, you know, mathematically figuring how the progression of these things are and making sure you have the frame for the cuts and all that kind of stuff. So at that time, you know, think about doing it now. Yes, those are really, you know, kind of difficult tasks, but it wasn't then. That's just the way we did things. Desert. Two things. One is the, how great also you were with our kids in the, the hotel. Uh, yeah. I got four of my own uh, there. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to go from here and talk more. <laughs> genius uh, kid. But uh, the other was I get back because we were in the desert and we were in uh, uh, Death Valley. Valley and then that hotel that we Creek. Yeah, yeah, Furnace Creek thing. Well, this was a. That's what we were saying. Yeah. We, this, uh, this was like a, a you know, motel. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is what we were shooting down from yeah, Furnace Creek on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the, the opposite of a resort kind of thing. And it had one tree. It was a kind of U-shape, and it had one tree in the middle of it. And, I, you know, we'd work out there and then come back just before dawn. We'd, be, we'd quit, you know, like three or something. And I'd come back and get out of the car and go towards the room and the idea of what a red glow under the tree. And it'd be Robert out there sitting in a chair smoking a cigar. <laughs> and I had some of the most amazing conversations with him because he's so philosophical. 
and he didn't sleep a lot. You know, he never really slept, but he was always the same. You know, he was like one of those guys that you, 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 if he had a drink, you didn't know it. It was always even. You know, he even, and uh, he loved to sit out there. And I was beat. You know, but I still have to sit there with him and uh, and we talked for a long period of time. But it was, you know, he was very different in this part than this side. You know, he he was filled with a lot of think remorse about his early behavior in his career. And he talked a lot about what he had processed at this point and being very evolved, kind of from away and, and very humble, not arrogant. But I would say that. When that whole thing happened, I was shocked. Uh, I did not understand it. All right, before I let you guys go, one last time, Bill, can you please do a David Lynch impersonation? <laughs> 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 I think it's a, just like he lets everybody decide what the movies are, everybody gets a shot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Watch a little YouTube, try it in front of me. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much for coming.